So today on this Sunday, we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. As we just heard in the Gospel, it's the recognition of the truth that Jesus, after his time on earth, ascended and is seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. But he sends his disciples out, and they said that they ministered and they knew that he was with them. And they went out and they preached preach the gospel, and that's why here in 2024 in Woodbury, we're here today because the the apostles, they went out, they spread this good news far and wide so we too would know this truth that God's alive, that he loves us, that he died for us, he rose from the dead. So this Feast of Ascension is 40 days after Easter, um, and in the liturgy there's this beautiful... um, word, or I guess a, a little phrase it's, uh, that we might reflect on is, what is all this about? What did God actually do for us in these Easter days? What is the Feast of the Ascension? What is it all about? How do we understand it? And it says that uh, Jesus, on his earthly pilgrimage of love, came and went about doing good works. But kind of a beautiful line, Jesus, on his earthly pilgrimage of love, that that's actually why he came, is on this pilgrimage of love, to, to diffuse far and wide his life, his goodness for you, for me, so we would be able to, to taste some of that, to be able to live in that. But ascension might be something that's maybe a little bit hard for us to, to understand, so sometimes um, I've seen stained glass windows before depicting the ascension, and it was in our first reading, Acts of the Apostles, where you just see a cloud and two little feet sticking through the cloud, And all the apostles are like, what do we do now? There he goes. (laughs) So Jesus actually ascending. um, So it can be a little bit, okay, well, well, what's the mission now? But a beautiful uh, truth is that it's like Jesus is actually a great commander. So he's been here. He's been in the battlefield with us day in and day out. But now he's taken his, his rightful seat at the right hand of the Father in heaven. So he has this vantage point now where he can see everything and he's able to mobilize us, his troops, the apostles. He's able to give them his life to be able to to be with them, kind of as a commander is able to see the entire entire map, all the moving pieces that that are in uh, in that plan for the battle for souls, the battle for diffusing far and wide his love, his goodness. The, uh, the line that comes to me is uh, what the Incarnation is all about. So if Jesus is here for his earthly pilgrimage of love, uh, it's what a lot of the church fathers, the saints, would talk about the great exchange, the great exchange that God became man so that man could actually become God. This great exchange so you'll have to permit me here. This is, this is what I studied in Rome, dogmatic theology. So I kind of like this stuff. <laughs> but I think it's important for us because it helps us uh, conceptualize when we pray and when we worship. Like, how does God actually, like, where is he here now? And, and what does that make a difference for us? So Jesus, after his earthly, earthly pilgrimage of love, is actually seated now at the right hand of the Father. But it's actually... Um, our very humanity that is now there at the right hand of the Father. Like, like that's, this is the scandal of what God has done for us. God actually became man. He, he was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a life like ours in all things but sin. And then he died for us. He rose and he was with his apostles for 40 days. He was teaching them the scriptures. He was appearing to them in his resurrected body. But now he's seated. He's seated there at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And it's the very same stuff, human nature, that all of us have in this church today is actually at the right hand of the Father in heaven. So where he's gone, we can actually have a real hope for where we're going. So we can think of heaven sometimes as this disembodied place or like we don't really know what it's going to look like. Maybe we're playing poker with the guys and it's just great, you know. Well, no, it's it's actually... It's, it's having our resurrected bodies and actually being with Jesus there. He's, he's paved the way for us to stand next to him, to be able to receive his life, to be able to be in that communion with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus himself. 
In the letter to the Hebrews, they speak about Jesus, our great pioneer and our perfecter of our faith. He's the pioneer, the perfecter of the faith. It's kind of like, wow, he, he's opened the way and, and, and he wants us to be able to live in that way, to be where he is. This, um, so maybe that's not enough for us. That's okay if you're not with me yet, because uh, that's all the conceptual stuff, but I never, it never under, I never understood it until I understood God's deep desire for us, for me. So this is the second uh, mystery of the glorious, uh, of, of the rosary, the glorious mysteries, the ascension. So I was praying that for many, many years throughout my life, but I never quite understood what, what is the ascension? What does that really mean? But it's once I understood God's deep desire for us. So throughout the Gospels, particularly the Gospel of John, Jesus would speak. He's saying, um, especially in John 17, his high priestly prayer, he says, Father, I desire that those whom you have given me would be with me where I am to behold my glory, the glory that you gave me in your love for me before the foundation of the world. Father, I desire, I desire that they would be with me. This deep desire that really Jesus has for each one of us to be with him, to be in heaven, to be able to, to see him, to see him as he is. But he doesn't leave us alone. He gives us all the, the, the tools, the resources here on earth to really be able to, to take those steps in faith to be with him. St. Augustine would describe this mystery as he says, Today our Lord, um, our Lord Jesus ascended into heaven so let our hearts ascend with him. Let our hearts ascend with him. So how did the apostles, how did they go out and actually preach the gospel to all the world? They must have lived with their hearts ascended. Like with this truth that God's actually at the, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He's given the spirit of truth to them. He's given them everything, the sacraments, but they needed their hearts to be raised up, to be ascended with him, to live in that way, to live in that presence. I always speak about this with, uh, with married couples, with couples I'm prepping for marriage, that we have to make a choice to live our life within a broader horizon, within, within the horizon of Christ, that he's actually He's seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He desires us to be there with him, and he wants to be with us along this journey. But it's, it's a choice to say, yeah, I want my heart, my life, to be in this broader horizon. And only in that way can we actually deal with all of the, the struggles, the setbacks, the sufferings that we will experience in life. It's actually, okay, yeah, we do live in this, in this valley of tears, and life is really hard. It's messy. We get turned around at times. But it's these truths that Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith, has opened a way for us. And our hearts are supposed to rise back to this truth again and again that he's actually prepared a place for me. Like he's actually prepared a place for me. He'll say this to his disciples, says, I'm going to go away, but do not be afraid. I'm going to come back so I can take you to myself. But we got to let our hearts stay in that place of faith. Jesus has ascended. How do our hearts ascend? How do they stay light? Keep our eyes in this eternal plane, this eternal horizon. And one of the most powerful ways Jesus' life is continually given to us is obviously in the sacraments. And particularly in his body and his blood, in his soul and divinity that we celebrate when we come to Mass. So Jesus says, I'm going to the Father. I prepared a place for you, but I'm going to come back so I can take you to myself. I'm coming back so you, I can take you to myself. So it's not a far stretch to say every time it's, it's a reality. We can say it's true that every time we celebrate Mass is the Lord coming to us so we could be led in Him, through Him, and with Him to the Father to have this heavenly horizon that as Jesus has been raised to the right hand, he wants our hearts to be raised up to see that truth, that this is where we're going, this is the orientation. And if we keep, keep this at the center, it allows us in the storms of life uh, not to lose our bearing because he really wants to be with us, strengthen us. 
So let's receive him, just that wonderful gift of his full presence here in the Eucharist today, to let our hearts live within this broader horizon of faith, the horizon where Christ has died, he's rose again, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father for you and for me and for our salvation.